Good morning. It's a new week. It's a new day. Glad to be with you today. And uh, we are into our last week of uh, our 21 days of fasting and prayer. Um, our last day is Sunday. Um, if you have to end Saturday, so 20 days of fasting and prayer, that's fine too. Sunday's our last day. So we're, we are in the home stretch. And uh, we'll kind of be talking about that during this week because um, if you're new to fasting, the last week has its own challenges. Um, in some ways, it's it's the easiest week. Your body has acclimated. It's changed. It's it's uh, it's gone through that detox period. Um, thank God. Come on, someone, uh, give me a holler. <laughs> that first week is rough. It's rough. Um, but you have figured out some things and navigated some of those, uh, physical challenge. The last week, um, tends to be a week where, uh, at least for me, I have a lot of, um, de desires, you know, um, temptations. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, you know, start dreaming about food and, and those kind of things. So, um, the last week can be tough, but you got this. And we're going to start off by by touching the most important thing. Um, we do want to remind you that the 31st is our uh, business meeting. We call it Vision Night here at Shoreline Community Church. Um, I'm getting people who are asking me if we got a lot of things. We're going to, we've got two deacons that we'll be uh, voting on. Um, Dan uh, Patnow is uh, going to um, let his name run again for this year. We love Dan and so glad that um, he's going to continue to possibly um, serve as one of our deacons. And then we have uh, Lydia Lopresto, brand new, stepping up, first time. Um, so there's really nothing except for, um, you know, we'll go through the financials, which don't usually take long. So my, my point is we want you to be there as, if you're a, a member. Um, a lot of people are asking, do we got a lot of business? Because of the pandemic and because we're going to be virtual, we're going to keep it light. We're going to keep it um, streamlined and, and we'll move fairly quickly. So um, that's the 31st, 6 o'clock. There's a go-to meeting link on our website, sccbranford.com. Org. It's right on the front page. Go down a little bit. You'll see Vision um, Night, and the link will be there at six o'clock. We really, uh, you know, want you to be there. Need you to be there. It's always important. Um, but we've we've you know condensed things down this year. We're not we're not getting crazy. We're not making changes to our our uh, bylaws or anything like that this year. Pretty, pretty simple, pretty simple, straightforward, and we'll we'll keep it moving. So we'd love for you to join us. Shouldn't take us an hour um, to be in and out and done and get you on with your um, get you on with your evening that night. So if you're not a member, you're always welcome to join us. Um, you would be able to join in. You would not have a voice, um, but that's okay. You can see what's happening. Um, it's not going to be one of our exciting ones. There's not going to be a lot going on. But, uh, yeah, you're part of the family. We'd love for you to, to come and be there. We have nothing to hide, and you're welcome to join us. Uh, okay, so, um, oh, the other thing is this Sunday is our prayer, 6 o'clock here in person or at home. We do that via uh, Facebook Live, SCC Branford. Okay, here we go. I want to talk to you about your heart today. Um, you know, Check your heart. That was kind of a funny saying. Uh, Christian comedian um, had you know, was sharing there for a while, and um, but that's what I want to talk to you today about. I want to talk about checking our heart, keeping our heart in check, um, because this last week, if we're seeking God, things are going to bubble up. Things are going to bubble up. Um, God's going to. work on our hearts. He's going to confront some things. He's going to get a hold of us. Um, that is part of fasting. That's that's what should happen. And so this last week um, has been my experience, and, and I hope it's your experience, that God begins to say, you know, 
this attitude, uh, you've become so accustomed to him, you don't even realize that sin anymore. This, 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 um, the way that you interact in your marriage, huh? I want you, I want you to see how it looks to you. Um, your kids, the things that you're allowing your kids to to get involved in. Let let me show you where this is heading. Um, God, God loves us so much that he is constantly um, working in our hearts and and. That's what I want to talk to you about today. So in Joel chapter 2, um, didn't know that there was so much in the Old Testament about fasting, did you? In Joel chapter 2, I want to read to you from um, verses 12 through 15. And my Bible gives us a heading. It says it's a call to repentance. God's always going to call our hearts to repentance. We, we have this tendency to believe that, and we've gotten into this real false narrative that God works through our actions backwards. No, God's always going to work with our hearts, and the overflow of the heart will be how we speak, how we treat people, how we interact, how we how we uh, conduct our business, how we parent, how we spend our money, um, how we spend our time. You know, it's always starts with the heart. You're not going to change an action until you change your heart. You're not going to change a belief until you change your heart. If you're wrong here, you're always, always, always wrong in your heart. So look what God speaks to the prophet Joel. That's why the Lord says, turn to me now while there is time. Give me your hearts. Give me your hearts. You know, we used to say this in youth ministry. Show me your friends, I'll show you your, you, your future. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. The people that you spend time with, the people that you allow to have influence in your life will dictate where your life is headed. Give me your hearts. God says, give me your heart, I'll show you your actions. Give me your heart, I'll change your actions. Give me your heart, come fully to me with no, with no uh, qualifications. Because here's what we do. We say, God, I'll give you my heart. But you can't have the part where I look lustfully at other men or other women. God, I'll give you my heart, but you can't have the part where I want to divorce my spouse. God, I'll give you my heart, but you can't have how I do business. Because, you know, that's the way you do business. You know what I'm saying? Right? God, I'll give you my heart, but you can't have the bitterness. I have to do this one little... God says, no, 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 no. Give me your heart hearts. It goes on. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Fasting, we've said over and over, means I mean business. It's our way of saying, God, I mean business. If you mean business, you're going to give up something. Weeping shows that we are, are sincerely broken. Mourning says that we are giving it up. Mourning means we're, we're letting this die. It's dying. It's dead to me. I don't need that bitterness. I don't need that lust. I don't need that anger. I don't need that um, bigotry anymore. God, I just, I'm giving you my heart. Now look at this. Don't tear your clothing in grief. Jesus talks about this in the book of Matthew. Clean yourself up. Put your hair, don't let anybody know you're fasting. Don't tear your clothes in grief. Grief. Look what he says. He says, but tear your hearts instead you you want to you know we want to make a big show ah! <laughs> i'm so sorry god you see the people that got to pray for 20 minutes to to pray for something that you know just ask god takes 30 seconds right and you're like show get to the point god's not a, god's not impressed by your tearing of your clothes this is none of that take your hearts instead let's get to the inner innermost parts of your being. Why are you doing this? Why are you allowing this? Let's get to that. I'm more impressed by that than I am by your outward, outward show of piety. Return to the Lord your God. Mm. Quit skirting around it. Return to God. What places, Revelation chapter 3, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. 
talking to the church, right? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you'll let me in, if you'll let me in, we'll clean up the area and we'll throw a party. Return to the Lord your God with every part of your being. No pretense, no qualifications, no barriers, just God. For he's merciful and compassionate. He's slow to get angry. He's filled with unfailing love. He's eager to relent and not punish. God just wants to love on us. He doesn't want to discipline us. He doesn't want to, you know, put barriers on our life. John 10.10, 10, I've come that you may have life and have it to the full. I've always, God's plan has always been a full and a rich life. Who knows, perhaps he'll give you a reprieve, sending you a blessing instead of a curse. It's talking to the people of Israel. It's like, man, it's about to get ugly up in here. But you know what? I'd rather send you a blessing than a curse. All you got to do is turn around. All you got to do is turn around. Do what you know is right. Perhaps you'll be able to offer grain and wine to the Lord as God before. Blow the ram's horn in Jerusalem. Announce a time of fasting. Call the people together for a solemn meeting. The end of this sounds like a party. It really does. Blow the ram's horn. Announce a time of fasting. Call the people. You know what? If you want to get it right, you want to get to the heart of God, then do the business. Do the work, right, to get to the blessing. Blessings don't just... There's a process for blessing. You don't give your kids, you don't give your kids a blessing when they're acting like brats. That's not a good parent. We've all seen those parents and we're like, what is your problem? You're just reinforcing bad behavior. Stop it. God says, I'm going to reinforce good behavior. I'm going to reinforce the things that you do that are right. Because the things that you do that are right are a blessing to you. It's not about us, God. The blessing is ours. This last week, say, God, examine my heart. I said yesterday in my sermon, let's make it a point to reach the Father's heart this week. Let's make it a point to, to touch the Father's heart. Let's make it a point to connect with him. Not just click off, I didn't eat lunch, missed social media. No, 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 no. let's take that time and let's focus on Meeting with God. God, everything you have, I want. God, your blessings and your peace and your provision and your joy, your goodness. And God, I don't even want them just so I can get I just want to be with you this week. Check my heart. What's keeping me from fully, fully embracing all of you? God, I pray that we would run after you. I pray that this week would be a week of blessing. I pray this week would be a week of you doing some deep work in our lives so that, God, so that our Father, we can be closer, more intimate with you. Not just for blessing, because the blessing is you. You are the blessing. Check our hearts. I pray. In Christ's name. Thanks for a couple of minutes of your time. I pray that you and your family will be blessed this week. This is going to be a great week. This is the week of breakthrough. So hang in there. Keep going. God's got it. Thanks for a couple of minutes of your time. I'll see you tomorrow.